It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl, the quiz program here in the Prince George's County Public Schools. And we have two outstanding elementary schools playing our game today, Allenwood Elementary School and Dodge Park Elementary School. And we're featuring questions from our traditional six categories of Zoo Parade and Green Things, Body Systems, Let's Get Physical, Science Potpourri, and Dateline Science. Three questions in each category. And now let's meet that team from Allenwood Elementary School. Would you please say hello to their captain, Xavier. Xavier waved everybody at home. Hey, Xavier, good to have you here today. He's joined by Brian. Hey, Brian, give us a nice thumbs up and a wave. Nice to have you with us today. And joining that team also is Layla. Hey, Layla, nice to have you with us today, too. She's got that nice spell. Everybody looks like they're excited and ready to go. So let's begin our game. Let's go to the green things category. This is all about plants. We have three questions for you. The first one is worth five points. Here it is. Make sure you talk among yourselves. And Xavier, you get the last word because you are the captain. Five points. Here we go. When trees want to get onto the internet, if they could, like us, they do this, but for them, it's easier. Yes. What you think? I think Brian it's... has his hand up. Brian, what, do you, what was your thought? So they want to get on the internet and it's way easier, right? Yeah, oh, it's, it's uh, one it's... word. Sorry. Yes, you're thinking out loud. That's good. Layla, any ideas? And Brian, I see you looking down there. Look, keep up, you know, keep looking up and looking at your teammates there. All right, it's kind of a joke. It's just a five point question. When trees want to get onto the internet like us, they do this. But for them, it's easier, Layla. They log in. They log in. You bet they do. That's worth five points. Perfect. <laughs> I was hoping you'd get that one. Let's go to 15 points in green things. When you're trying to figure out your family tree, you're really digging down to find your what? Layla. Roots. Your roots. That's right. You're kind of find the roots of your family. That's great. And you need not raise your hand, but that's fine. Whatever works for you. For 25 points. There are flowers called carrion flowers. C-A-R-R-I-O-N. Carrion flowers. They produce a smell like rotten flesh. Oh. It's to attract pollinators because the plant is pretending that it is, a de de it is a decaying animal. This pretense is known by what M-initialed word? You're pretending to be something you are not. Layla. Make sure you unmute yourself, honey. Okay, she's thinking of something. Xavier and Brian, make, make this a group think here, an M initialed word that describes something that is pretending to be something that is not. This flower is giving off this awful odor because it's pretending to be an animal that's dead and decaying, so it will attract pollinators. Correct word there is a mimic, a mimicry. If you mimic somebody, that means you're doing something that is a pretense. Let's go to the zoo. Go to the zoo. Five points. The world's largest predator, Alan Wood, whose favorite food is the giant squid, was the star of Herman Melville's famous book, Moby Dick. Okay, we got everybody's hands up there. Layla, what's your thought? It's a whale. A whale. She thinks it's a whale. Brian, what do you think it is? Unmute yourself, Brian, so we can hear what your thoughts are. Sorry. I also think it's a whale. 
You also think it's a well. And Xavier, how about you? I also think it's a whale. And it is a whale. You got yourself those five points. It's actually a sperm whale. A famous story, Moby Dick. For 15 points, I have a picture to show you. This is a visual question. All right, Alan, would have a look at this. You are looking at the underside of a mushroom cap. The structures that you see on the underside of that mushroom cap have what same name as the respiratory organs of a fish. Layla. Gills. That's right. Those are gills. The gills on the underside of the mushroom. You guys are doing very well. Very well. How many of you like to eat chicken thighs? Chicken legs. Yeah, oh, that's good stuff. Those poor chickens, they're, it's their curse to be so tasty. Here's your 25-point question. If you're eating chicken thighs, you're eating the meat from around the chicken's femur bone. We have a femur bone, too. But if you're eating a drumstick, most of the meat comes from around these two bones, the same two we have in our lower leg. All right. We see Brian putting his hand up. He's going to unmute himself and give us his ideas. Go ahead, Brian. I think it's the thigh. Uh, remember, it's two bones. We need it's oh, a two-part two answer. Oh. Two bones. Okay. okay. The, the top one is the femur. That's the thigh bone. And then if you're eating a drumstick, you're eating the, the meat around the two lower leg bones that have the same name in a chicken as in a human being. I think I get it now, but um, I want to pass it on to my other team. Is that they know? Xavier, what you thinking? Go ahead. The shin. The shin. Oh, you're you're close. You're close there. Remember, it's two bones. One is called the tibia, and one is called the fibula. A tibia and a fibula, and one of them is known as the shin bone. I give you that, but we needed both. All right, I have three more questions before we go to your first break. You're doing good. Here's the body system. Five points. The three tiniest bones, the three tiniest bones in your body, the smallest of which is the stapes, S-T-A-P-E-S, are found where in your body? You got 206 bones. The three tiniest bones in your body are found where? And the tiniest of them all was called a stapes. Any ideas? You're using them right now, Brian. I think the stapes is located inside your finger because that's like kind of the smallest bone inside your pinky. I like that thinking. It's you're thinking about the pinky. We can we can go even smaller than that, Layla. What do you think? You had an idea. She's thinking again, Xavier. What do you think? You're the captain. Give me an answer. In your head. Said in your head. Ah. Uh, correct answer is they're in your ear. In your ear inside your ear the little bones and they're attached to each other and they actually move the vibrations from the outer ear to the very inner ear so you can hear what i'm saying right now all right let's go to your 15 point question in body systems your trunk and your chest are also called this t initial part of your body this is also we can call it the trunk your chest, but also it has a T initialed word to describe it. Any idea for 15 points? It's called the torso. Torso, T O R S O. Lately goes, yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that before. All right, let's go out with a bang here. 25 points in body systems. Last question before we take our first break. I hope you know something about your heart. It's got four chambers in it, four little rooms. The walls of your heart's left ventricle have to be very thick since the blood leaving there has to travel all over your body. It's got to be really strong. 
but the walls of the right ventricle aren't nearly as thick, since blood from that chamber only has to make it through the pulmonary artery to these organs. Blood from the right ventricle is going through the pulmonary artery to what organs for 25 points? They're going to your lungs. The blood is going to your lungs. And the, see, I remember, you know, when you train for this game, of the word pulmonary, like in cardiopulmonary resuscitation, pulmonary always refers to lungs. So keep that in mind for the future. All right, 90 points. So that means you're sitting okay. So Captain Xavier, while we take the break, before we bring you back, talk to your teammates. You're the quarterback. Tell them how you're going to change how you operate when you come back. From the, for the second half, all right? See you in a few moments. We're now back with the team from Dodge Park Elementary School, and let's meet these three fine young ladies here. The captain of the team is Brianna. Brianna waved everybody at home. Thanks, Brianna. Godsmile is here. Hey, Godsmile, she is a fifth grader. Brianna's a sixth grader, and we have a third grader playing today. That is Ophelia. Hey, Ophelia, wave to everybody out there. Nice to have you join us today. All right, let's get started with your green things question. Green things for five points. The question's about plants. Kind of a joke. Listen carefully. If you are looking for something high in the branches in a tree, and it's just not there, it's not there. You're said to be doing this up the wrong tree. If you're looking for something high in the branches that just isn't there, you're said to be doing this up the wrong tree. It's a saying you probably yeah. heard. Go ahead. Any ideas? Um, leafing? Not leafing. It's called barking. You're barking up the wrong tree. That comes from way back when, when they used to hunt foxes and, you know, they thought the fox went up the tree and the dogs are down there barking. There's no fox up there. The fox outwitted the hounds. You're barking up the wrong tree. So barking was the right answer there. For 15 points in green things, let's show you a picture. This is a visual question, Dodge Park. These tropical trees get their name from the appearance of their leaves that look like the fingers branching out on your hand. What kind of trees are you looking at? Uh, you're looking at tropical palm trees? Palm trees, that's right. The palm of your hand and the leaves looking like the fingers. That's why they call it a palm tree. Remember that. That's kind of neat. All right, for 25 points, let's get this one. Despite its name, this plant that everybody hates to touch, this plant's urushiol oil is a skin irritant that doesn't enter your blood, does not cause an infection, and is not actually poisonous. What plant are we talking about? Poison ivy. Is it poison ivy. Poison ivy, that's right. It is poison. It's more a, a skin irritant, but poisons have to get into your blood, and it does not happen that way. Good answer. Give yourselves a pat on the back. 25 points. You're on a roll. You're on a roll. Let's go to the zoo. Here we go to the zoo. All right. For five points, while chimpanzees and dogs were the first animals to ever fly in outer space, what bovine preceded both in a nursery rhyme by jumping over the moon? A dog jumped over the moon. A dog jumped over the moon. Now, I just said now, chimpanzees and dogs were the first animals to fly in outer space, but it was this bovine who preceded them all by jumping over the moon in a nursery rhyme. The cow jumped over the moon. You got that right. The cow jumped over the moon. Thank you, Ophelia. Hey, diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport, and the dish ran away with the spoon. That's a great, everybody seems to remember that if you grow up with it and you hear it. All right, 15 points in the zoo. 
not to scare you even more. How many of you have ever been to the ocean and gone and swum in the ocean? Have you ever been to the ocean? Yeah. And what are we afraid of that's out there that might eat us? Sharks. Yeah. Sharks. Sharks, that's right. So here's your question. Not to scare you even more, but if you go into the ocean, sharks, even though they're able also to detect just a single drop of blood, just a single drop of blood, they can also detect this kind of energy that we give off, normally measured in watts, W-A-T-T-S. We give off what kind of energy that sharks can detect? Normally measured motion? in watts. Not motion, no, not motion. Not the scaredness? It's you measure electricity in watts. We, produ we produce an electrical current, even though it's very small, but that is how sharks can detect us and the, the prey they normally eat, like seals and fish and other things. Uh, yeah. Is, is it it's, force? It's, so the correct answer was electrical there, or electricity. Oh. All right, 20, 25 points in the zoo. Last question in the zoo. Listen carefully to these words, because I'm trying to give you clues in everything I say. A marsupium, which sounds like a word you might have heard. Sounds like a word. Listen carefully. A marsupium is one of these body parts where a joey can start to grow up. If you know what a joey is, and marsupium, marsupium sounds like think sounds like a word that you know, you'll know that a marsupium is one of these body parts in an animal where a joey can start to grow up. Marsupium sounds like marsupial. Those are those animals that live in Australia. And a joey is a baby kangaroo. So where do they grow up? What special part? In, a, in a kangaroo pouch? In a, in yeah, a kangaroo yeah. pouch? Right. Would have, yeah, pouch was the right answer. We can't give you that because I kind of went through the whole thing. But yeah, it's a pouch. A marsupium is a pouch. That's why they call them marsupials. Let's go to the body systems for five points. This is kind of disgusting. It's really disgusting. You know, sometimes you eat something and it just does not agree with you. You've all done it. You've been sick to your stomach. The only two ways your body can get rid of bad food that you've eaten are vomiting and this. Digesting it? Pooping. 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 Pooping is right, yes. What's another, what's another word for pooping that uh, maybe happens too fast? Digest. No, not digest. We'll take pooping, but diarrhea. Diarrhea is the word there that I was looking for, but we'll give you a credit for pooping. <laughs> I told you it was a disgusting question. Body systems for 15 points. Good answer there. All right, let's see how much. We all now get our temperatures taken everywhere we go. They put those thermometers up against our head here. Well, room temperature is considered to be 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Our body temperature standard is how many degrees? What is normal body temperature in Fahrenheit degrees? Think now. It is 97. Is like, it 97? 97. Oh, you're so close. You're so close. 98.6. 98.6 is normal body temperature. Uh, God smile, you came very close to that. Let's get this last one. 25 points in the body system before you take your first break. Someone suffering from something called peritonitis has an infection inside their abdomen. Very serious. But someone suffering from this condition, periodontitis, just, just a couple extra letters, has an infection in their heart, their lungs, or their mouth. If you have periodontitis, do you have an infection in your heart, your lungs, or your mouth? So it's a multiple choice question. Everybody has a say here. Ophelia, pick one. Um, your lungs. She says lungs. God smile. I pick lungs too. You pick lungs too. And Brianna, you pick one. I'm going with lungs. 
All right. Well, you all got on the bandwagon. The key part of periodontitis is D-O-N-T, which is like dental. Periodontitis is an infection in your mouth, in your mouth. All right. Good try that. It's, hey, the last time you played this game was never. You're going to get, you're going to get better. When you come back, you know, you're going to be hitting your stride. 100 points. All right. So that means you're heading into the second round with some base. You'll be able to build on that in just a few moments. See you in a couple moments. Good work. All right. The team from Allenwood is back with us. And before we ask them their last nine questions, let's find out about these players here. Let's find out about the captain of the team. And uh, Xavier, tell us a little bit about yourself. Why did you want to be on the Science Bowl? I wanted to be on the science bowl because I wanted to know more about science because when I get older, I want to be a zoologist. Oh, that's great. Zoology is a great field. And there's a great show on TV called The Bronx Zoo that takes you behind the scenes of all what the animals eat and how they exercise the animals. And for animal lovers, it's a great show to watch. And I wish you a lot of luck. You'll, you'll, be, uh, you'll be in... A great profession if you choose that. And we like your Christmas tree there today, too. Thanks for joining us. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's go to Brian. Hey, Brian. Hello. I, I know you're anxious to, you were anxious to be on the show, and I hope you're enjoying yourself, and I hope that uh, your second half, uh, you come up with some good answers. And just remember to unmute yourself, so if you have an answer, we'll be able to, see, we are able to hear it. What do you want to do someday, young man? Uh, sorry about my camera quality, but what I want to do inside the future is that I really want to code games and also be inside the crypto market so that I have a big, I have a big amount of money so I can retire pretty soon when I'm still pretty young. And <laughs> the, re the reason why I even joined the show is because I wanted to have a feel and a taste of how like to like say stuff online and stay calm and have a way so that you could talk online or announce things online because another thing that I want to do in the future while as a game designer I want to listen to people's ideas if they have any good ideas inside this video game that I really want to make. Wow you are so well spoken already young man and uh Think about communications, and that is a field that will serve you well. And uh, you're talking about cryptocurrency and coding, and these are all the things that people are concerned about today. And you look already as if you're fitting the part. I can see you talking to people online, and uh, it's great to have you here today. Great to have you here. Let's talk to your other teammate and Layla. Hey, Layla. Tell us about yourself, and why did you want to be on the show? And you know so much about science. How do you know so much about science? Well... I know so much about science because it's mostly what I like to look at, and that's my favorite subject in school. Wow. I'm so glad it's your favorite subject, and you're proving that here today. You have an energy about you, you know, and you look like you're enjoying this, and we enjoy having you here today, and keep it up in the second half. Uh, great addition to the team. All right, Alan Wood, it is now time for your last nine questions. Let's go to the let's get physical category. So let's get physical for five points. Are you guys ready? You still with me? Give me a thumbs up. Give me another 10 minutes. That's it. Give it your all. Here we go. Let's get physical for five points. How many of you have ever taken flowers that you bought in the store and took them home and maybe put them in some water? Maybe you brought them to your mother, your grandmother. You ever see cut flowers? You know, if you want those flowers to keep looking good, keep looking good, maybe for over a week, add a small amount of bleach, something you normally put in your laundry, because it contains a powerful chemical that contains what element with the symbol capital C, small l, capital C, small l, same chemical that they use as a swimming pool disinfectant. Chloride. Layla. Say it again. Chloride. Chloride or chlorine. Absolutely right. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Layla. See, again, you're proving how much you know about science. Yeah. And again, and I love the putting the hand up. You don't need to put your hand up. Just kind of push that button and say, Mr. Z, and blurt it out. All right, for 15 points. Listen carefully. This sounds complicated, but it's not. This is a neat thing to try. You can't get hurt. If you add baking soda, inside a balloon 
and then attach it to the top of a beaker full of vinegar, you will see the balloon fill with carbon dioxide gas. You have just caused a chemical reaction that absorbs heat. A chemical reaction that absorbs heat is the opposite of one that gives off heat. One that gives off heat is known as exothermic. One that absorbs heat is known as what thermic? The opposite of exo. Uh, Correct answer. Go ahead. Any ideas? Okay, uh, so I have an idea, but like I'm, I want to give my team some ideas too because I don't really get it because it's the opposite of giving out heat, and I've yes. heard about like absorbing heat, which is not hydrothermic. Yes. It's I'm not sure really, but I've heard it before. I know you've heard it before, I and. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Layla, you had an idea? Hypothermic? Not hy hypothermic is a good guess. It is called endothermic, E-N-D-O. Endo is the opposite of exo. All right, I liked your ideas. Let's go to 25 points and we have a visual. Look at the picture, guys. Look at the picture of the pictures. You know, sometimes paintings have paintings behind them that have been covered up. An artist sometimes will paint over what he or she has done, and other pictures are behind. That's what you're seeing here. So to see what's behind the original, you can't scrape the paint off, but people who can clean old paintings in museums, they often discover additional pictures behind the originals by using thermal imaging techniques. Thermal imaging techniques, which use what kind of radiation that we know as heat. What kind of radiation can they beam onto those pictures so they can see a picture behind a picture? It's the kind of radiation that we know as heat. A laser? Not a laser. It's called infrared. Infrared radiation, and that's what heat is. And you know when they take your temperature, when you come into school and they want to see if you're if you've got a, a, a fever, that is infrared radiation. The blood in your body is warm, and they can detect that with infrared radiation. All right, the detectors. All right, let's go to Potpourri for five points. I know you know this one. Among the greatest wildlife, come on, we've got a zoologist out there. Among the greatest wildlife conservationists of all time was this biblical figure who had double vision with his ark. Unmute yourself, Brian. Unmute yourself. Was it a um, blue whale? Like that this is a person. This is a person. Oh, a person. Among the greatest wildlife conservationists of all time was this biblical figure who had double vision with his ark. Who built an ark and filled it with animals? Um, Come on, Xavier. Noah's Let's ark. get it. Who is it? Noah's ark. Noah's ark. Noah, that's right. And why did I say double vision? We're giving you the five points. Why did I say double vision? Because how many animals did he take on the ark? Two of each. Two of each. Double vision. Okay. All right, let's go to Pope Brief for 15 points. In a laboratory, there's all kinds of equipment. There's something called a graduated cylinder. And then there's a thermometer. A graduated cylinder may have a diploma, since it's graduated, but a thermometer has far more of these. A thermometer, I think, has, like, what's inside a thermometer, what you're asking about? No, I'm asking about, I'm asking about, it's kind of a joke, 
It's a play on words here. A graduated cylinder is a piece of glassware. It may have a diploma. Of course, it doesn't have a real diploma, but when it says graduated, it sounds like you've graduated and you got a diploma. But a thermometer, it doesn't have a diploma. It has these. Something you got when you graduate from college. It's a, well, a thermometer, I think, measures like heat and cold, right? In what units? In um, Celsius? I mean, Fahrenheit? Degrees. Degrees. Oh. A thermometer has degrees. Graduated cylinder has a diploma. We were playing off those. All right. 25 oh. points in potpourri. Got it? Okay. 25 points in potpourri. You know, uh, nuclear reactors. You know, we get some of our energy from nuclear reactors, atomic energy. They do that by splitting atoms. If you split an atom, that's known as nuclear fission. Fission means to split. But the sun produces energy when atoms of hydrogen and helium come together. They're not breaking apart, they're coming together. So instead of nuclear fission, what's the F initial word that means when you bring things together? Nuclear fusion. Got it, 25 points, good. Potpourri, good. All right, you guys look like you're getting tired. Just, I've just got three more questions for you. Listen for, listen for these. Dateline for five points. It's probably not too hard to imagine that this American statesman, a person, and inventor, was shocked, really shocked, when he discovered electricity when he was flying a kite in a thunderstorm. Maybe you've seen pictures of him. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Uh, he was standing out there, and he had a key on the string there with the kite, so it was able to ground the lightning. All right, for 15 points, you know that we recently left, America recently left a country called Afghanistan, where we were at war, and a lot of the refugees were brought back. They, they, a lot of the people from Afghanistan were brought into this country. In order to get in, they had to get vaccinated. They had to get an MMR vaccine. The R stands for rubella. One of the M stands for mumps. The other M stands for this childhood disease that you probably got a vaccine for. Causes a rash. Melanoma? Not melanoma. What childhood disease can cause a rash? You get an MMR vaccine for rubella, mumps, and measles. Measles. Do you remember getting a measles vaccine? Maybe your parents told you about that. And for uh, Dateline, for, for 25 points, last question of the game. There was a French scientist. Boy, he, he did some. He pissed somebody off, I think, because they cut off his head. They guillotined him in France. Antoine Lavoisier helped invent the metric system, and he named two very important chemical elements with atomic numbers one and eight. The atomic, the elements that together make water. Give me them both. These are very, very hard. I know you've seen these pictures of uh, a molecule of this substance um, a wa of wait, water. So water particle? Like a water particle that like it takes thousands of them to connect to each other. I'm just asking what water is made of itself. Itself. Have you ever heard of H2O? H2O, oh. that's water. H2O. Yeah, yeah H2O water. is water, like, because I played yeah. Zoonautica before it's a game, and I just like, kind of <laughs> saw that. Yeah, and the H stands for hydrogen, and the O stands for oxygen there. All right, 125, let's see if that's enough to win the game, and we will see you in a few moments. Alan Wood, thanks for playing today. Let me see a smile out there. These were some tough questions, but you, you approached them in the right way, and I'm proud of you. It is now time to bring back the team from... Dodge Park and find out a little bit about our players. Let's go to the captain, Brianna. She is a sixth grader. And Brianna, why did you want to play on the Science Bowl? We're happy you're, that you joined us today. 
I joined you guys today because um, I love science. It was one of my greatest passions ever since I maybe even started school. Um, I entered the science bowl because I wanted to see if I could get also a championship for Dodge Park Elementary School as a team. So that's why I am here right now. Well, uh, you've made a good start, and I know Miss Arcalita is very proud of you and your principal as well, and uh, you're doing a great job. And I like hearing about your passion for science because, you know, uh, that's when you really want to learn things if you're, if you're curious and, you know, it's something that you care about. Good luck to you in the second half here, Brianna. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's go to God Smile. God Smile, you're, you're playing a good game here today. Let me ask you, how do you know so much science? I know science because since I was like in second grade, I always like to um, mix vinegar and baking soda to make like a volcanic eruption. And since that, Ms. Arcalita told me I'm going to be in the science ball. My mom was very happy. My parents were happy. And I, I just wanted to take this opportunity to see if um, I can get like a champion to us, like Brianna said, I can like see if I'm very good at science. Well, you're, you're, not only are you very good at science, but you are so well-spoken and you're articulate. And uh, I can tell you're a great student. I can see why your parents are proud of you. And you are doing them uh, a, an honor by being here today. Uh, good luck to you in the second half. Let's talk to your last teammate. Let's talk to Ophelia. Ophelia, you're just a third grader. My goodness sake, you must have really impressed Miss Arcalita to be on the science ball. You could be on the science ball right on through the eighth grade. This could just be the start. Why did you want to do it? Um, I wanted to do the science bowl because science was one of my favorite subjects. Wow. Well, and that's a good reason to be here. And I hope it stays your favorite subject. And uh, keep up your good work in the second half here. And I applaud you for being on the show as a third grader. We don't get many third graders, and you're doing really well. All right, Dutch Park, it is now time for your last nine questions. If you're ready, here we go. Stay with me. Let's get physical for five points. Light, heat, and sound are all forms of energy. But this caused when two surfaces rub against each other and produce heat is a force. When two things rub against each other, let's say you're walking and there's a stone in your shoe, and it's rubbing against the back of your foot, and you're getting a blister. That rubbing generates heat. And what's that called? Is it called fraction? Friction? Friction. That's it. God smell perfect. It is friction. Good answer. All right. I knew it was in there somewhere. All right. Here is a multiple choice question for you. Gold, silver, copper are examples of metals that are malleable. Malleable, probably a word you hadn't heard before, but think about it. Does that mean they can be hammered thin without breaking? Does it mean they can't react with other chemicals? Or that they're hard to get out of the earth? Gold, silver, copper are malleable because are they, they can be, they can be thin. hammered thin without breaking. They can't react with other chemicals, or they're difficult to extract from the earth. They're difficult to extract from the earth. Um, I agree with God Smile. I agree with her too. Okay, actually it means you can pound them real, real thin and they won't break. In fact, sometimes in restaurants now, they have gold on food, edible gold, and it is paper, paper, paper thin. All right, let's get to the next one. This is the 25-point question, and it's a visual question. Have a look. How many of you have ever heard of a duckbill platypus? A duckbill platypus is a weird animal. It looks like a beaver. It's got a tail like a beaver. It's furry. It's got a bill like a duck on the front. You find them in Australia. They are marsupials. It's been discovered, though, that platypuses will glow blue in the dark if a black light is shined on them. What kind of invisible radiation is in a black light? Two letters. A black light. 
can cause some creatures like that platypus, even scorpions, to fluoresce in the dark. It's ultraviolet. Ultraviolet light is a black light. Let's go to potpourri for five points. How many of you are thinking about or have already gotten a vaccine for COVID? You might be thinking about it. You might have had it already. You know, people are also getting vaccinated against the flu. Getting a flu shot, unfortunately, doesn't offer any protection against COVID-19 because the two diseases are caused by totally different kinds of these. What causes COVID-19? Viruses? Yeah, that's it, that's it. And now, was that Ophelia or was that God's smile? It was was Ophelia. Oh my gosh, you got yourself five points. That's what I wanna hear, viruses, good. And I like that you're clapping for yourself because I wish we had a studio audience and we could clap for you. 15 points for potpourri. You know what coral reefs are underneath the ocean, you know, oh, they're beautiful places with all those beautiful fish. Well, sometimes corals get stressed out because the water temperature gets too hot, there's too much light, there's not enough food. So the corals bleach, they turn white because what kinds of green plants, the same kind that we find in household aquariums, live with the corals, but then they leave when the corals get stressed out. Seaweed? Seaweed we will take or algae. Seaweed or algae. We'll give you credit for that. Good. 25 points in potpourri. You know, there's a saying, water, water everywhere, if you're out on the ocean, but not a drop to drink. Why can't you drink any seawater? Because it has so much salt. So, and if you try to drink it, uh, your kidneys will break down. To turn those salty seawater into drinkable water, which they can do, it's very expensive. Scientists use the reverse version of this O initial process that moves molecules from high concentration to low concentration across a membrane. That O initial process. Sometimes you've heard about it. Some people think that you can learn something, not by studying, but through this process. Maybe if you put your head on a book. Have you ever heard of osmosis? Osmosis is the answer there for the 25-pointer in potpourri. Dateline for five points. Just three more. Stay with me, girls. Stay with me. I know you cannot miss this answer. You cannot miss it. Recently on the nightly news, this was actually back in September. It, the lead story was about students like you coming back to school amid the pandemic. The anchor man started his story with, and he quotes, the first subject all those students will be studying today is this, which is the first name of this program that you are on. Science. science. Yes, the science. First thing they're, yes, the first thing you're gonna study is science. Your favorite subjects. I'm glad you got that question and that answer. For 15 points, in Dateline, chemical element number 102 is named for a man who invented dynamite, blowing things up. And he gave enough, he made enough money with dynamite to recognize outstanding scientists every year with prestigious sci- uh, prizes. The best prize you can earn as a scientist, you can get it in physics or chemistry and medicine. Can you name that chemical element or the man whose name is in that name. I hope one day you folks, since you all love science, will win one of these prizes. It's a Nobel Prize. The Nobel uh, Prize is the right answer. And the chemical element is called Nobelium. Last question, 25 points. Boy, this is a great story. It started out a high school football player. He was playing football and he fell the wrong way He broke his neck and he's paralyzed now from the neck down. Just a horrible freak accident. Recently though, he graduated from high school. He walked across the stage because he was wearing an armored suit named for the outer covering that is found on insects. Insects have a hard shell known as this. 
and they built this for this boy so he was in this armored shell and he could walk across the stage to get his diploma. Name that outer covering found on insects for 25 points. End the game. Come on, girls. Is that outer cover for protection? It does help protect the, uh, absolutely. It does protect that insect. You know, it's the skeleton. It's their skeleton. Their skeleton is on the outside. Our skeleton is on the inside. So they call it an exoskeleton, whereas ours would be an endoskeleton. So you end the game with 130 points. Let's see if that's enough to win it. We thank all of you for joining us today for this edition of the Science Bowl. Allenwood, Dodge Park, all winners because of the great play you just witnessed. Let's have a nice round of applause. Even though they can hear it, we want them to see that we are pl plotting for them and for each other because that's what they deserve. Congratulations to the two coaches, Miss Linda Williams from Allenwood and Miss Arcalita from Dodge Park and Moise Moise from Dodge Park. The principal is here and Miss Gobo is from Allenwood. And the game could not have been closer because our final tally is Allenwood 125, Dodge Park 130. So by five points that means dodge park you get to go and play the winner of a subsequent game and uh, i just want to say everybody played beautifully today and i can see why science is your favorite subjects because you do so well at it thank you all for playing the game and i hope for a lot of you this is the beginning of a long-term commitment so if you're a third grader like ophelia or a sixth grader like uh the captain brianna Stay with us, play in the middle school, and uh, I hope this is the, the beginning of a, of a great career, whether you go into science or not. And I hope you learned something today. And I just, uh, it was my pleasure getting, getting to meet all of you. Thank you guys, and thank you all for watching. See you next time on The Science Bowl. Till then, I'm Dave Zarin. Bye-bye.